So good morning, all of you once again. So today's topic is financial statements for non-corporate entities. Financial statements for non-corporate entities. So let me share the screen. Are there any financial statements which are prescribed for non-corporate entities? Let us put this question first. Most of us all these years are of the view that what are all the non-corporate entities for them, there are no financial statements which have been prescribed. If we take the example of companies, you have Companies Act, wherein Schedule 3 prescribes the financial statements for companies. If you take some other non-corporate entities like trusts, for example, under Maharashtra Trust Act, there is a separate format for disclosure. There is a separate format for financial statements, right? But, but as far as the, I don't, Ramesh, my actually there was It's audible, sir. Ah, please. Right. If we take the example of Maharashtra Trust Act, in the Maharashtra Trust Act, there are format for financial statements. Right? If you take the example of a proprietary concern, or if you take the example of a Hindu undivided family or a partnership firm. Generally, we understand that no law prescribes the financial statements for such a type of entities. Now, what we are going to deal is in today's session, are there any formats that have been prescribed for preparation of financial statements of these non-corporate entities? For this, uh, first we have to understand that our institute uh, has released a technical guide on financial statements of non-corporate entities in the month of June 2022. In June 2022, the institute has released a technical guide, right? Now, this technical guide consists of formats for financial statements of non-corporate entities. Now, whether a chartered accountant has to follow this technical guide or not is another question which we will be dealing at a later part of our discussion, right? Now, as late as uh, March 2023 or in the month of February, the Institute has released an exposure draft on guidance note on financial statements of non-corporate entities. So a guidance note exposure draft has been released, right? Now, you all know that whenever an exposure draft is released, it will be open for comments of members. Now, for this exposure draft, uh, guidance note on uh, financial statements for non-corporate entities, 8th of March was uh, fixed as the date by which the comments from members and other stakeholders is to be received. So basically what we should understand is, Though there are no financial statement formats prescribed for non-corporate entities, nonetheless, our institute has issued a technical guide in the month of June 2022, followed by the exposure draft of guidance note on financial statements of non-corporate entities. Now, sooner than later, we can expect a guidance note in respect of this 
format for financial statements of non corporate entities right any time maybe in this month or in the next month at least we will be getting the final version of this guidance note a guidance note will be effective from the date on which it is mentioned to be effective in the guidance note itself generally that date will be the date on which it is published in the gadget right next so we understand that there is a technical guide we understand there is an exposure draft for guidance note once this guidance note becomes effective the technical guide stands withdrawn the technical guide stands withdrawn now let us understand as to what do you mean by general purpose financial statements you already know that general purpose financial statements include a balance sheet a profit and loss account a cash flow statement and the notes on accounts thereof and schedules now these accounting or financial statements or general purpose financial statements are to be prepared in accordance with the relevant accounting standards so if these financial statements are prepared in accordance with the accounting standards then the information in those financial statements will be reliable now that will enable the users of the financial statements to make informed economic decisions so first moot point what we have to understand is any financial statement which is being prepared it should be in accordance with the accounting standards only when it is prepared in accordance with accounting standards the statement get a reliability upon which a stakeholder can take informed economic decisions whether an accounting standard is applicable or whether all accounting standards are applicable to a particular non corporate entity or not are accounting standards mandatory in respect of non corporate financial entities that question we will deal at a later point of our discussion but for now we will just understand that a financial statement prepared in accordance with the applicable accounting standards will be reliable which will be helpful for the stakeholder to make an informed economic decision now what is the need or why it is required that there should be a prescribed format for a financial statement now in particular the formats for non corporate entities have been released for the effective implementation of accounting standards first we understood that accounting standard should be followed to prepare a financial statement now in order to enforce or in order to implement the utilization of accounting standards while preparing financial statements now these formats have been prescribed now we understand that a draft a exposure draft for guidance note has been issued now what is the objective of issue of that guidance note the objective of the issue of guidance note is to standardize the formats for financial statements now we very well know that if 15 of us are in this session we understand that at least there will be 15 formats for the financial statements of the non corporate entities which we may be auditing i may have my own format each one of you might be following your own format so if all of us follow different types of formats they won't be any standardization of the financial statements so our institute in order to standardize the format what they have done is they have prescribed these formats and because of this standardization and prescription of these formats for financial statements this will also improve the quality and comprehensiveness of the financial reporting right now who has prescribed this formats 
these formats have been prescribed by the Accounting Standards Board of ICA. These formats have been prescribed by the Accounting Standards Board of ICA. Welcome, Purnagaru. So, so just what I was referring is, if there are 15 of us uh, in this room, each one will be having their own format of preparation of uh, preparing financial statement. And our Purna sir, he has his own way of uh, preparing a financial statement. Of course, I may or may not uh, follow your format. Uh, you will follow your format. So what has happened is the institute has issued a guidance to standardize the format. So which wing of institute has issued accounting standards board. So when we know who has issued uh, this particular format, the accounting standards board has the authority as far as the accounting aspects are concerned. So this authority has issued the format. Now, what is the scope of these formats which have been prescribed for non-corporate entities? What are all these formats that have been prescribed will be applicable to all non-corporate entities. What do you mean by a non-corporate entity? We will understand at a later point of our discussion. So this will be applicable to all non-corporate entities. Of course, there is an exception. The exception is that where any law, regulation or authority prescribed any other format, if any authority or a law or a, any regulation prescribed a, a particular non-corporate entity to follow a particular format, then this format as suggested in the guidance note or for that matter in the technical guide will not be applicable, will not be applicable. Now, for them, what should be the format? They should adopt that format that which has been prescribed that law or regulation, right? Next. Now, is there a, uh, any example for this uh, exception? That is, format has been prescribed by any other law. For example, if you take uh, the Maharashtra Public Trust Rules 1951. So, those trusts which are uh, registered law, for them, they have a format prescribed under that law. For example, our institute has a released a guidance notes as to how to maintain accounts in respect of a school. How to maintain accounts in respect of a political parties. What should be the format for financial statements of a political party or a school. We have a separate publication of ICA. All of us may wonder as to where all this information is available. So for that, I would request your attention to the ICA website, ICA.org. If we go into the institute website, in the menu resources, you have something called as free download of online publications. If you go into that section, if you click on guidance notes, you have various, all these publications are free of cost for download. You may even order physical copy. Of course, you have to pay charges with the CDS portal. If we go into the guidance note on accounting aspects, here you will find that guidance note on accounting and auditing of political parties. Here there is a specific guidance. Then this general guidance note won't be applicable for those which have a specific guidance. Right now, if we take the example of uh, another, how to go out of this? 
Okay. Let's uh, take the example of uh, another uh, guidance note. Uh, So, resources, free download of online publications. Now, in the guidance note section, if we go into guidance note on accounting aspects, here you may find uh, another guidance note with respect to guidance note on accounting for real estate transactions. Guidance note on accounting for real estate transactions. Now, this is another guidance note. So here also, here also, what we understand is there is a guidance note which has been prescribed. In the same manner, there is guidance note for audit of schools. There is a guidance note for audit of schools, right? So you can go and browse here, wherein you have a vast resources of information available on our website, ICA website. Now, where did I get all these guidance notes, etc.? I will tell you, if you're going to free download of online publications, if you're going to Accounting Standards Board, other publications, here, you can find technical guides and other material. Now here, what you will understand is, since this guidance note on uh, financial statements for non-corporate entities is uh, not at a uh, made a final version one, here you have the technical guide on financial statements of non-corporate entities. And uh, one more important thing is, there is an Excel file for illustrative financial statements that has been given. So they have prepared the, the Excel format also for our convenience. They have given the Excel format also for our convenience. Here you can download and uh, you can go through or you can download and adopt in respect of your clientele. Okay. So moving forward, moving forward, since we have examined that certain formats have been prescribed for certain type of non-corporate entities, we'll follow them. If uh, in particular, no format has been prescribed, we can adopt these formats. Now let us understand as to what do you mean by non-corporate entity? It is a wide gamut. There are various types of non-corporate entities. For example, sole proprietorships, Hindu undivided family, partnership firms, be it registered or unregistered, AOPs, societies, trusts, statutory corporations, autonomous bodies, authorities, any other form of organization any other form, anything which is not incorporated under Companies Act. Let us take Life Insurance Corporation of India. It is a non-corporate entity because it is not registered under the Companies Act. It will automatically become a non-corporate entity. Let us take the example of a bank, nationalized bank, right, which is governed by the Banking Companies Regulation Act. It is also a non-corporate entity. So, anything which is not incorporated will be a non-corporate entity. So, we have seen certain examples of non-corporate entities. So, there is a non-corporate entity which is not, which has been discussed earlier. <laughs> that is also a non-corporate entity, but which is fully or partially engaged in any business, profession, activities, <laughs> unless they are fully charitable, unless there are 
fully chargeable. For them, this financial statements formats will be applicable. Right? Now, what about an LLP? Is it a non corporate entity? No. LLP is not a non corporate entity. LLP is registered under or incorporated under LLP Act 2008. Therefore, LLP is to be regarded as a corporate form of entity. <laughs> so, these formats won't be applicable. So, can you adopt Schedule 3 of the Companies Act to LLP? No. Can you adopt these formats given in this guidance note or technical guide? No. Then, what should be the format for a, a LLP? Or oh, not? Your own format, which everyone has to follow. Most of us follow Danny format. So now let us understand as to whether our institute has given any guidance with respect of financial statements for LLPs. Financial statements for LLPs. Again, we will go into resources, free download of online publications. Here you have Accounting Standards Board, other publications, technical guides. If you examine, you have something called as Technical Guide on Financial Statements of LLPs. So at the time of release of a technical guide for financial statements of non-corporate entities, simultaneously a technical guide for financial statements of LLP is also released. So, if you are preparing the financial statements of an LLP, it is advisable you refer to this technical guide. <coughs> right? As in the case of uh, uh, the non corporate entities, for LLPs also, already an Excel format has been. They have made available for free download of members, right? So what we understand is for LLPs, these formats are not applicable. <laughs> the financial reporting of an entity should be comparable, transparent, complete, and unbiased. How will we you ensure that all these features have been taken care of while preparing your financial statements? If you follow accounting standards, rest assured, they are comparable, they are transparent, they are complete, and they are unbiased. So the moot question is whether you are following the accounting standards while preparing the financial statement. After all, one may argue that the responsibility to prepare financial statements is that of the management, but not of the auditor. Yes, it is accepted. But an auditor has a responsibility, reporting responsibility, where the financial statements are not prepared complying with the accounting standards by the management. That we will uh, understand or deal at a later point of time. Now, what are accounting standards? Accounting standards are wholesome principles. It is a standardized business language which will communicate a high quality of financial information, right? Now, accounting standards are based on the principles of transparency, consistency, comparability, and reliability, right? 
there are a set of principles which the entities have to follow while preparing their financial statements. Now, what will happen if you comply with accounting standards? They will properly disclose the financial position and the financial performance of an entity. If you follow accounting standards, now the topic, today's topic is about format of financial statements, but one may wonder why we are going through accounting standards. Why? Because the format suggests that you have to comply with accounting standards. Is it mandatory or voluntary is a question to be seen at a later point of our discussion. If you follow the accounting standards, the financial position as disclosed by the financial statement, <laughs> financial performance. Financial position is disclosed by the balance sheet. Financial performance is demonstrated by the profit and loss account. This performance and the state of affairs will be presented in a standardized format. In a standardized format. Let us say all of us have different types of clients. Each one of our client went to, to the same bank for a loan processing for CC of 50 lakhs. Now, each one of us have gave the audit report for which the financial statements are attached. And all our financial statements went to the same person. Now, if these are in a different formats, it will be very difficult for that person who is dealing with or who is studying that financial statement to understand each and every item. But if all of us follow the same format, then what will happen? If all the reports of each of us go to the same person, there is a standardized language in that financial statements, which that person can easily understand. Our institute is striving that these non-corporate entities follow a standardized format, right? Uh, <laughs> just an example of a banker. So who are the persons for whom the financial statements are required? Will they differ? As to corporate and non-corporate, we will examine. For corporate entities, who are the stakeholders, shareholders, regulators, potential investors, lenders, creditors, other stakeholders. For non-corporate entities, more or less, they will be the same. <laughs> potential investors, employees, lenders, suppliers, trade creditors, customers. These are the users of the financial statements. For a company incorporated under the Company Act, you have a format under Schedule 3 of the Company Act. But for non-corporate entities, there is no prescribed format under any law, barring a few exceptions here and there. Okay? Now, all this discussion, what we have done till now, we appreciated the fact that financial statements, if they comply with accounting standards, there are some advantages. Now the question arises, what arises, whether they are mandatory or is the question. Are accounting standards mandatory for non-corporate entities or not is a question. Now, the answer is yes. 
the answer is yes from when from accounting period starting from 1st april 2020 accounting standards are mandatory for non corporate entities however that non corporate entity should be engaged in commercial industrial or business activity then they will apply when the accounting standards are not applicable to the non corporate entities no part of the activity is commercial industrial or business if no part of the activity is as such means completely charitable then the accounting standard won't apply the next question what will arise is there is an entity a portion of whose activity is commercial rest of the activity is charitable does accounting standard apply to such a type of entity yes in such kind of entity accounting standard is not only applicable to the commercial activity but applicable to all the activities including charitable activities there is an exception from accounting standard only when the entity's 100% activity is not industrial commercial or business that we should understand <laughs> now what are the types of accounting standards three types of accounting standards or prescribed and in work as on date what are they in the as second one is accounting standards applicable to companies of course in the as is also applicable to companies but specified type of companies accounting standards prescribed under the companies act will be applicable to all companies except for those in the as is applicable that is another thing and the third category of accounting standard is prescribed by icai for entities other than companies all this dis time discussing with you i am trying to drive a point that the non corporate entities which we are dealing as on day for them accounting standards are applicable it is very much essential to understand and digest that point first so three types of standards india as companies other than india as and third finally other than companies prescribed by icai now in the as is applicable to certain categories of specified companies that you can go through now accounting standards applicable for other companies other than those for whom india as is applicable which are notified under companies accounting standard rules 2021 now they are accounting standard 125 there is no sixth number 7 there is 7 there is no eighth number standard and balance 9 to 29 all of them are affected but under these rules certain companies called small and medium companies are given certain relaxations or exemptions as far as these prescribed standards are given now <laughs> dealing with accounting standards for non corporate entities as prescribed by icai for this icai has brought out a scheme of applicability of accounting standards icai has brought out the scheme of applicability of accounting standards 
to non-corporate entities. For what periods this scheme will be applicable? For the accounting periods commencing on or after 1st April 2020, the scheme of ICA applicability of accounting standards to non-corporate entities will apply. So already two years have passed. Already two years have passed wherein tally balance sheets and profit and loss accounts have been utilized by most of the uh, successfully utilized. Nothing has happened. But it won't be the same in the future. Something will happen. Already started. Yeah. Already started. In for my error. Last two years is not corona. Before that, two years is corona. Yeah. So, uh, for now you will follow. You will follow this. Definitely. Right. <clears throat> so, two years have already been passed or elapsed from the date of applicability of this scheme by ICA. After all, it is our mother institute. If not, we who else will follow? Say so at least uh, we should follow. Right? Next step. This scheme of applicability of accounting standards to non-corporate entities divides the non-corporate entities into four levels. Level 1, 2, 3, and 4. Level 1, 2, 3, and 4. What are level 1 entities? Big entities. Right? Big means what? Securities are listed or in the process of listing on a stock exchange. You may wonder that this fellow is talking about non-corporate entities and he is uh, stating that uh, level one entity securities are listed on a stock exchange. Jayantgar, am I right? Uh, you thought this being a breakfast meeting this Nitta has got confusion all the way. Okay. How come? Ah, yes, you have that doubt in your mind. I can understand. In the previous slides, we have one slide wherein as to what they mean by non corporate entities, a wide gamut. In that, uh, we have understood that. Something not incorporated under the Companies Act, for example, for example, LIC, for example, banks, they are also non corporate entities. Their securities might be listed. So, if such a type of non corporate entity is there, it is classified as level one. Right, banks and uh, institutions carrying on insurance business. <laughs> Turnover is more than 250 crores. Borrowings in excess of 50 crores. Holding and subsidiary of these entities. Here also you may get uh, a doubt that how a non corporate entity, this fellow got confused with the breakfast meeting will have a subsidiary. The answer is yes. There may be an insurance company having a subsidiary outside India. There may be a bank which will be having a subsidiary in India or outside India. Right? Now, all these uh, types, whether it is cumulative or separate, for each and everything is separate. Each and everything is separate. Even if they come into even one criteria of the listed criteria, for them, they will be termed as level one. <laughs> level two. Most of us, 
may not be having many number of level one ATP. A few, some of us may be dealing with, but level two, three, four entities, most of us will be dealing. Okay. What is level two? Turnover greater than 50, less than or equal to 250. Or borrowing greater than 10, less than or equal to 50. Holding and subsidy is level 2. What is level 3? Turnover greater than 10, less than or equal to 50. Borrowing greater than 2, less than or equal to 10. Holding or subsidy. Right? Level 3. Level 4 is a residuary level. If a non-corporate entity not being level 1, level 2 or level 3, it will be level 4. It will be level 4 entity. Right? Now, what are these levels? ICA has introduced a scheme of applicability of accounting standards to non-corporate entities, wherein non-corporate entities are divided into levels. Now we shall understand the applicability of accounting standard to each level. Level well companies, they have to comply with all standards. There is no exception. There is no exemption also. Right? Or there is no relaxation. They have to comply in full. That's all. As far as level 2, 3 and level 4 entities are concerned, this is the table. Let us say AS1 applicable to all, even 2, 3, 4 categories. Let us take uh, AS3. It is applicable to level 1 but not applicable to 2, 3, 4. Now, even though it is not applicable, is there any bar on you for not uh, adopting that? No. It is optional. You may adopt. But there should be consistency. Right? If you take uh, AS10, it is applicable to 2, but for level 3, it is applicable, there are certain exceptions to disclosure requirements. Same is with level, level 4. For level 4, AS10 applicable with disclosure exemptions. Right? So, if you take 15, they are applicable with some exemptions. Like that, you have to check. Okay? Now, what is prefaced to the statement of accounting standards state? The preface to statement of accounting standards states that the accounting standards are applicable and mandatory from the date from which it is mentioned as such in that standard. Now, previously, we discussed that the responsibility to prepare the financial statements rests with the management. So it is the responsibility of the management to see that accounting standards are complied with while preparing financial statements. <laughs> now, <laughs> what is the responsibility of the auditor is the next question. The duty of the member of the institute is to examine whether AS is complied with in the presentation of financial statements under audit. Auditor, though he does not prepare the financial statements, the financial statements which he is going to audit, he should check whether they comply with accounting standards. What an auditor has to do if the financial statements do not comply with accounting standards. 
then if there is any deviation it is the duty to make adequate disclosure in the audit report so that the users of the financial statements will be aware of that so though you are not responsible to prepare uh, financial statements which comply with standards it is your responsibility at the time of the audit if there is any deviation found out you should definitely make appropriate disclosure in your audit report with regard to such disclosure now the preface to the statement of accounting standards also states that ensuring compliance with the accounting standard while preparing financial statements is the responsibility of the management we all know suppose a non corporate entity is governed by any statute is governed by any statute sometimes that statute itself may prescribe that the financial statement should comply with accounting standards if you take the example of general insurance companies in india the general insurance companies should mandatorily comply with the accounting standards while preparing financial statements that has been prescribed in the insurance rules made under the insurance act itself right next <clears throat> there are many standards many requirements let us say i have complied with 90 percentage of the requirements now can it be said that i complied with the accounting standard yes or no no you will be said to have complied with the accounting standards only if you comply 100% then only you have you will be set to have complied with this standard now there are many standards many requirements of disclosures now how we can ensure that the entity has complied with all those requirements for our help institute has released a a publication called as accounting standards disclosure checklist if we go through that checklist then our life will be easy now let me just uh, uh, show you that disclosure checklist right this is the thing now this publication was issued uh, this is a revised 2022 publication which is the latest publication if we go into this they to use the checklist they have given AS one, AS two, AS three, etc. For all standards, they have given. If we go into the checklist per se, here we can examine. Now. a person will be said to have complied with the accounting standards if if and only when all are complied with now how to ensure that all are complied with you can use this checklist what does checklist say whether all the significant accounting policies adopted in preparation and presentation of the financial statements have been disclosed yes no not applicable whether accounting policies form part of financial statements yes no not applicable all significant policies are disclosed at one place yes no not applicable change in accounting policies having material effect whether they are disclosed and quantified yes no not applicable so in this manner for all the accounting standards checklists have been given 
So while uh, performing if you have your audit, if you go through this checklist and fill this checklist, uh, then you can come to a reasonable conclusion that whether they have complied with or not. So Purnagaru, me doubt na kathavai. Yenni page lo choose on tar kundar ma Purnagar. No tab ayro ni page lo ma. Hey, hey, hey. Ah, adi ne da point ke ostana. Ah, financial statements anta, accounting standards follow on anta, tarvata. Yala ante checklist anta, okoti ayi ondra page la, ondra page lo note abe page lo ondita. Ah, ne nu practice se yala akar leva. Yehi vaati va vaati or driving into the alaga da. You check the board again. How to collect the fees? Uh, guidance not cover. Yes. Yes. And the effect of this may not be known today. But down the road, after three or four years, everyone will feel the heat. Now, in June 2022, technical guide was released. Thereafter, in March, in February itself, guidance note has been issued. Next, you can expect the next year what? Standard. Next, you can expect a standard by next year itself. Because wherever have something may happen, the first scapegoat fellow will be a chartered account. You all know. Whenever something happens to a chartered accountant, all of you, if not all of us, at least some of us might be representing to the authorities and the council. So when a representation go there, automatically they will think of it. <coughs> yes or no? So whenever an issue arises, then these types of things will automatically come. So if you don't want to, what the institute tries to do, if you don't want uh, to go into trouble or invite a trouble for yourself, you should be careful while carrying out your attest function. So that is the crux of it. Okay? It will take some time. Right? But uh, whether to follow or not uh, is an individual decision. But uh, Days are not far away wherein uh, our tally balance sheet and the profit and loss account uh, won't be sufficient. Right? So, if someone wants to sincerely ensure that accounting standards are complied with, for them, institute has uh, come out with uh, or has invited with uh, both uh, open hands as to you can widget this checklist. Okay. So there is a guidance for the member to follow. Okay. That is the thing. Next. Sir. Yeah. Society is actively done through one twisted chair. I mean, the format follow body no, no. The thing is, these are the formats prescribed for non corporate entity. What is the scope of this format? It applies to all non corporate entities except for those corporate and non corporate entities for which an act or regulation or authority has prescribed a format. <laughs> If there is a AP trust act which does not prescribe a 
format for financial statements. Institute guides us to follow the format given in this guidance. If Maharashtra Trust Act has prescribed a format, then you follow that format. But institute won't direct or encourage the, that person to give a format. Am I clear? Uh, even though Abhi is Danish Becker, Black Boy Nagara, Affirmative Follower. Yes. Good. Yes. Yes. Not only that. In this format, for a particular item, there is a particular type of presentation. Right? Let us say if an accounting standard or any authority which governs this type of organization prescribes that you should disclose this item in this fashion that will prevail over this format. To that extent, you have to modify this format also. Okay. This format gave a presentation for an item in a particular fashion. Let us say accounting standards state that you have to present this in this format then the accounting standard prevail over this format. This format is a minimum format. Wherever any additional disclosure is required, you have to comply with. Wherever alternate disclosure requirement is mandated by any statute or law or authority governing such entity, that also, to that extent also, you should modify this format, what we are going to discuss. now in the initial part of our discussion what we have understand is if financial statements are prepared in accordance by complying with accounting standards there will be reliability there will be comparability, right? All those things will be taken care of, okay? Now, in one slide also, we observed that what is the objective of this guidance note and format? It is to bring about uniformity in the reporting processes. I told you the example that, that uh, all of our, uh, each one of our client went to the bank for loan and they gave the financial statements prepared by each one of us. All of them are different. The understanding of that person, when compared to where all are in the same format, the understanding level of that person will be different. Okay. <laughs> For preparation of the, the duty of the preparation of financial statement versus the management. Now, what is the responsibility of the auditor? The responsibility of the auditor while conducting the audit of financial statements, which do not comply with accounting standard, is it will invite his observation or qualification in his report that so-and-so standard has not been complied. Uh, these things we have discussed in the course of our discussion. 
okay not that someone will ask for this format the institute opines that what are all the financial statements prepared for all categories of non corporate entities they should be in a standardized format so that they will give and that to prepare in accordance with accounting standards they will give fair reliable presentation of financial statements suppose an issue will come tomorrow wherein the auditor may be called for certain explanations now in order to safeguard ourselves we have to comply with the institute guidance notes and standards to to safeguard ourselves so we have to follow ipudu rey poddana edo oka case vishayallo pilichesa mana tally balance sheet pnl account chustaru that fellow wants to implicate someone let us say అప్పుడు ఏం చెప్తాడు మీ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ మిమ్మల్ని ఈ ఫార్మాట్ ప్రకారం చేసిన దాని మీద సంతకం పెట్టమన్నారు కదా మీరు ఈ కాగితం మీద ఎందుకు చిత్తు కాగితం మీద సంతకం పెట్టారు బికాస్ యూ హ్యావ్ సైన్ ఆన్ దిస్ రఫ్ పేపర్ సో అండ్ సో డిపాజిటర్ ఈజ్ ఎట్ ఎ లాస్ గవర్నమెంట్ ఈజ్ ఎట్ ఎ లాస్ ఆఫ్ సో అండ్ సో మనీ ఓన్లీ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ యూ అన్నప్పుడు వీ నీడ్ టు సబ్స్టాన్షియల్ మనకిస్తాం <laughs> ఫాలో <laughs> వాళ్ళు ప్రిస్క్రైబ్ ఫార్మేట్ ఏమి చెప్పకపోతే ఒకవేళ వాళ్ళ కనుక ఫార్మేట్ చెప్పేటట్టు అయితే ఖచ్చితంగా ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ దగ్గర నుంచి తీసుకోవాలనుకుందా లేదంటే వాళ్ళ ఓన్ ఫార్మేట్ వాళ్ళు ప్రిస్క్రైబ్ చేసుకోవచ్చా దే విల్ దే విల్ ప్రిస్క్రైబ్ దేర్ ఓన్ ఫార్మేట్ అండర్ ది లా అండ్ రెగ్యులేషన్ ఆఫ్ దట్ యాంగ్ బట్ బట్ దే మే సీక్ ది అసిస్టెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ టు ప్రిస్క్రైబ్ ఎ ఫార్మేట్ ఫర్ దెమ్ దెన్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ విల్ constitute a committee prepare that and give this will happen in respect of many many authorities no 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 ante unte ganta mottham manam aithe che kavalantho adhe bank ki maalu kuda equipment ayipothu no no there is no such mandate but uh, for all government agencies c and ag is the authority to prescribe the accounting processes and the formats so they may take the assistance of icai or that authority or that cooperative bank itself may approach icai to prescribe them a format but it is not mandatory for them to do so now when the auditor shall conduct the audit and issue audit report in accordance with the standards on auditing issued by the ica not only one has to follow accounting standard for preparation of financial statements but if you are going to audit that financial statement it is your duty to carry out the audit in accordance with the standards on auditing standards on auditing right 
Now, the, what is peer review? Peer review is nothing but to examine whether the auditor is following auditing standards uh, during the discharge of his audit function or a test function. So whenever the term audit comes, whenever he, for whatever white paper you name it as a report, audit report, then definitely you have to comply with the auditing standards. Now, the most important question comes. All of you may argue that, sir, nobody comes to me who is a non-corporate entity to issue an audit report. When they are the other can ask that, report even any non-corporate entity. Maybe a few cases here and there. Uh, barring a few cases, nobody will approach you being a non-corporate entity for an audit report. So most of us, what are we used to? We are used to tax audit report. We are used to tax audit report. If you are required to issue a tax audit report, it is your duty that you follow guidance note on tax audit under section 44AB of the Income Tax Act issued by IC. Whenever you carry out a tax audit, ensure that it is in accordance with the guidance note. Right? Now the question comes, what the guidance notes say? Do you accept? Next the question, what you have to answer? What does the guidance note say? Page number 39 of the guidance note on tax audit issued by ICA. It states that in para number 10, in case of certain categories of SSEs, example, society, charitable trust, respect to law governing the SSC prescribed form in which financial statement should be prepared. In such a case, they have to be followed. Right? In certain case of SSCs, law do not prescribe any specific format or requirement for preparation and presentation of financial statements. In such a case, the Accounting Standard Board of ICI has issued guidelines for form and related preparation and presentation guidelines. These are contained in ICI publication titled Technical Guide on Financial Statements of Non-Corporate Entities. Tax auditor may consider inviting the attention of the SSE <laughs> towards guidelines appearing in the said publication. So you may think that I am only carrying out a tax audit of a non-corporate entity. So we may have the opinion that this format and uh, auditing standards does not apply. Nonetheless, tax audit is an audit. So auditing standards should be complied with. Right? Nonetheless, the SSE to whom you are carrying out the tax audit is a non-corporate SSE. Should that non-corporate SSE comply with accounting standards? Yes. Why? Scheme of ICA of applicability of accounting standards for non-corporate entities. Level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. So for tax audit also, whatever financial statements are prepared, they should comply with accounting standards that we should understand. Should the SSC follow the format of the financial statements? The guidance note on financial statements formats states that if you are carrying out tax audit, you refer to the 
taxoid guidance note. What does the taxoid guidance note state? You advise the client to follow the technical. So all in all, what we have to understand is, even for tax audit also, these formats are to be adopted. Even for tax audit also, the accounting standards are to be complied with. Even for tax audit also, the auditing standards are to be complied with. Sir, nowadays, it has become a fashion that law enforcement agency will take the chart accountant to task, right? <clears throat> For shelter, to whom we will go? We will approach the ICA for our shelter and safeguard. What does ICA tell? Now bring what are all the reports you have issue. They will go through the report. When will they come after you or when will they support you? If we follow their literature, if you don't follow the technical guidance, the guidance, uh, note guidance, accounting standard guidance, auditing standard guidance, if we don't comply with that, it will be impossible for them also to support us. Eh? <laughs> ah, so not only this fellow may receive from the enforcement agency, if we approach them, he will be honored with a one more disciplinary case issue. That's what Gorna Sad is saying. Because this fellow has not followed all these things. Okay. Friends, <clears throat> is it possible to follow? Yes, it may be possible. But we can go in a stepwise manner. Let us say you are carrying out 50 tax audits. Of the 50 tax audit, let us take a oath that this year, let us comply for 10 percentage, means for five people. Or let us say 10 or five people or 20 percent. So in five years, what will happen? You can bring all your clients on board for complying this literature. All right. So what is a financial statement, balance sheet, p &L account, cash flow, notes on account? Now, the guidance note states that the financial statements should give true and fair view of the state of affairs of the entity. The financial statement should comply with the accounting standards and shall be in the form prescribed herein. Financial statement should be in the format which has been given here. They should comply with accounting standards. They should give a true and fair view. Now, <clears throat> let us go into some more general instructions for preparation of financial statements. The formats shall apply for balance sheet and PL account. Compliance with the relevant statute, including accounting standards as applicable, requiring any change in treatment or disclosure, then this format can be amended accordingly. Then this format can be amended accordingly. Right? It is not that this format prescribed is a rigid one. So it is not rigid. You can make some modifications. The terminology used generally relates to the wide variety of non-corporate entities. Let us say this format states that 
owner's capital in balance sheet. But the non-corporate entity, what you are dealing with is an AOP. Then you can change that terminology or heading as a member's funds instead of owner's funds. Right? So the guidance note itself gives you some flexibility. Whatever requirements are prescribed here, they are minimum requirements. If any additional requirements are required, then you are free to give those additional requirements. Right? Next. Where any disclosure requirements are to be made as per statute, they also should be given. Notes on accounts should form part of the financial statements. These notes should give narrative descriptions, disaggregations. What do you mean by disaggregations? Split up. Yes. Split up. Let us say you have a line item in the profit and loss account as a income from operations. In the notes, you can state that disaggregation manner Revenue from sale of goods, revenue from sale of uh, services, miscellaneous income, like that, you can do the disaggregation. Also, on the face of the profit and loss account and balance sheet, you should give cross reference to notes on account. You should give to, you should give cross reference to <laughs> notes on account. Chairman Garu, me breakfast meeting go. The upper ninety nine percent successful ever not doubt go. Like a Sankara Bargan cinema. Mother Nelgos no papa, they are late a hall. Okay, Nelgos no Nella in Taravata, Nidananga and the Kota Malavitin. So in the same manner, uh, your breakfast meetings are uh, successful to a reasonable extent. Chairman, peace of and love with other things. The face of the balance sheet and process and profit and loss account should have cross references. For example, Fixed assets, schedule five, right? Reserves and surplus, schedule two. Unsecured loans, schedule four. Like that, you have to give a cross reference to the items appearing in the face of the balance sheet and profit and loss account, right? Now, each item on the face of the balance sheet and profits and loss account shall be cross-referenced by to related information in the notes. However, you should maintain a balance between excessive information and no information. You should give information to a reasonable extent only. You should give the information only up to a reasonable extent only. Likewise, while conducting audit also, we should carry out the audit in accordance with the auditing standards to a reasonable extent. Not that you take the printout of all the day book, verify each and every transaction. For each and every transaction, you go into the property of the item. Some people are carrying out audit in such a fashion. Our chairman very well know about those type of audits. Eh? So, while presenting information also, you should strike a balance between excessive detailing and not providing important information. You should go to the extent of providing important information. Right? 
Next. <clears throat> this is uh, one of the things which has to be taken into consideration. For those uh, of you who are involved in company audit, you may be aware of this feature, which is uh, implemented from last year. Last year. Right? No. Our institute opines that even for preparation of financial statements for non-corporate entities also, rounding off has to be done in the financial statements. So, ICAI is driving the non-corporate entities also towards the corporate entities as far as these disclosure and presentation requirements are concerned. If your income is less than 100 crores, you can round it off to nearest 100,000 lakh million decimal thereafter. I don't think a rounding off to hundreds is a wise thing or generally it won't be done, I think. Normally what the people follow is round off till thousands or lakhs or crores. Right? If the income is more than 100 crore, nearest lakh million crores decimals. Right? The total income, budget, gross city, or sales as such, not income in the sense of profit loss. Sir, whatever terminology which has been used in the guidance mode, will have the same meaning as assigned to it in the accounting standards. Yes. Yeah. So the, the, for any terminology used in this guidance note, we have to refer to the accounting standard. So as per accounting standard, what is the total income? The same meaning it carries here also. But this rounding off if you adopt one method of rounding off in one year, it has to be consistently followed in the subsequent years. Now, corresponding figures of the previous year has to be disclosed, except for one year. That one year is the year in which the business is commenced. For that, previous year's figures won't be there. Right? Next. Sir, this is what I was referring to. The terms used herein shall be as per the applicable accounting standards. Right? Now, we have come to the end of this uh, PPT presentation. Now, what we will do is, we will go into... Japan. Sir, no, sir. Japan, sir. The vertical correction for me. Last year, the year ending 2023, we have to follow legal only. Parenting. As per technical. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, or whatever given in the technical guide or guidance code is not mandatory. Company. It is recommendatory in nature. It will become mandatory when it becomes a standard. When it becomes a standard, the, sir, generally the uh, steps is that first there will be a technical guide, then there will be a guidance note, then there will be a standard. Once a standard comes, guidance note will be withdrawn. It will stand with RAW. Yeah. As on date, format is recommendatory in nature. But when you are auditing a financial statement, it is the duty of the auditor to ensure that accounting standards are followed. Right? The main purpose is that they want to bring a standardized method of reporting for all non-corporate entities. 
but they are moving fast. That we have to understand. Sir, Chairman Gare the Chaptunara. So these are the we tend to take on the time. Kangar Bagalaya, Moriti Daka Kangar, Ipe Daka Kangar. Five minutes, sir. So, to build up confidence in you, I have concluded the PPT that you should understand. Your chairman should understand that we are. We bring up confidence in you that uh, we are nearing to the end of the session. For that purpose, I have concluded the PPT. Right? Now, these are the formats given by uh, for the purpose of preparation of financial statements of non corporate entities. More or less, most of the formats will be similar to that of a corporate entity. Okay. Most of the format will be in the same manner. So we will quickly browse through all these items. Uh, <laughs> equity uh, classified as uh, capital and uh, reserves, non-current liabilities, long-term borrowing, deferred tax credit, other uh, cap. Then, then comes the current liabilities. Then comes the assets, etc. Okay. Now, you will be having a profit and loss account. Revenue from uh, operations, other income, total income. Sir, here comes total income. Means which includes revenue from operations, including other income. Both combined you get the total income, right? Expenses. Uh, on the face of it, you have to do the cost of goods sold, employee benefits, etc., etc., etc. Extraordinary and exceptional items you have to give separately. Next, uh, you get uh, profit and loss before tax. There you have to give the tax expense, then uh, continuing operations, discontinuing operations, then profit for the year. So more or less, the format is similar to that of a company, right? In the notes, you have to give the significant accounting policies, and here you have to give the background of the entity. Like uh, this entity is named uh, so-and-so, it is into uh, wholesale trading of uh, uh, so and so good, right? So this type of basic information has to be given. This basic information, if you go into tax audit report also, what is the name? What is the PAL number? What are the registration numbers under various laws? And uh, uh, what is the nature of business? Is there any change in the nature of business? All this <laughs> basic information will be given. Now, for owner's capital, this type of a bifurcation is to be given. For owner's capital, so name, share, opening balance, capital brought in, remuneration, interest, withdrawals, share of profit, and a closing balance. Next comes reserves and surplus. You have to give the details. For secured loans, you have to divide between term loans and also from banks from other parties. All right. Next, loans repayable on de demand, deferred liabilities, unsecured term loans from banks and others. Loans repayable on demand, banks, others. Deferred payment liability. So each and everything you have to give detailed information or bifurcation. 
right next uh, coming to uh, long term liabilities you have to give advances from customers others provisions you have to give provision for employee benefits gratuity leave and cashment other provisions details you have to give trade payable you have to bifurcate between trade payable of micro small medium enterprises creditors other than micro small for under each of them we have to also give additional disclosure right similarly for current liabilities interest accrued but not due interest accrued and due next unearned revenue income received in advance gst paid tds paid other payables now for balance sheet uh, items tangible assets you have to give the gross block opening gross block additions or deletions closing gross block etc etc for intangible assets also you have to give similar type of information capital work in progress also opening additions capitalized closing balance those details have to be given similarly for inventories you have to bifurcate between raw material work in progress finished good stock in trade stores and pairs loose tools etc then trade receivables outstanding for more than 6 months and that to considered secured and good unsecured considered doubtful less provision so all these type of information you have to provide in the financial statements and similarly with respect to profit and loss account revenue from operations bifurcate as to sale of products sale of service grants or donation other operating uh, uh, revenue other income interest dividend net gain on sale cost of goods sold <coughs> purchase of stock in trade employee benefits finance cost depreciation other expenses generally for the other expense you know certain items have to be specified like uh, salaries rents and rates uh, consumables etc etc for other items you can provide aggregate disaggregation is uh, necessary only when it is more than 1 percentage 1 percentage of the total expenses that you know so too much disaggregation too much provision of information should also be not done whatever is required and considered reasonable should be provided okay so friends the idea is not to educate you or not to lecture you as to what should be the exact financial statement the idea of this session is to bring awareness as to there is a technical guide there is a exposure and draft for guidance note and that financial statements applicability is made to non corporate entities by a scheme of icai for accounting periods applicable from 1st of april 2020 and for the purpose of uh, uh, applicability of accounting standards to non corporate entities the entities are divided into four levels for level 1 all are mandatory for others there are some relaxations and exemptions so the whenever the term audit comes auditor has to comply with the auditing standards whether these formats should be utilized for tax audit cases whether the accounting standards are to be followed by those non corporate entities who are subjected to tax audit whether auditing standards should be complied with while carrying out the auditing standards so these are some of the moot points which i tried to bring to your kind notice in uh, for the purpose of your effective discharge of your 
attest function. So friends, with this, uh, I will conclude uh, and I will thank uh, each one of you for your patience listening. Thank you.